Hey, what's up guys? My name is Mark Delos and on this week's How Tuesday we'll be teaching you how to do variable slow-mos in Adobe After Effects. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do after you open up After Effects is click on Composition and select New Composition. If you're using DV Clips, this is exactly how you want to have your composition set up. I usually set up a folder of all the clips I want to do slow-mos with. That way you can get them all done in one shot. The next thing you want to do is highlight the clip you're going to work on. For right now, we're going to do Torres Back 360 Carlsbad High. You're going to right click on the clip, go down to interpret footage, click main. Because we're working with a DV clip here, we have to make sure that separate fields is lower field first. We're going to want to grab it from up here and pull it down into your composition. Now go down to your timeline window and highlight the clip that you just put down there. Go up to your main toolbar and click layer. Then scroll down to enable time remapping. That's what we're going to use to do the variable slow-mo on this clip. Grab the scrubber and find the exact spot where you want the slow-mo to begin. Usually, you want to set it up right where the rider pops his tail. If you can't find the exact spot you want just by dragging the scrubber, you can be a little more precise using the timeline controls and just clicking frame by frame. Go back down to your timeline and next to the time remap, you're going to click that box to the left which is going to set your first keyframe where you wanted the clip to start. We're now going to repeat that process for the outro of the slow-mo. Now that we've chosen our in and out for the slow-mo, we want to highlight the out keyframe by holding down shift and click. And also the keyframe that's all the way at the end of the timeline to the right hand side. Again, hold down shift and click. With both of those highlighted, you're going to now want to go back to your out keyframe, click on it and drag it to the right. On the left hand side, you'll notice that the percentage changes as you drag the keyframe to the right. The further you pull it, the slower the clip gets and you can see that through the percentage changing. I usually like to just preview it just to see if it's too slow or too fast. To do that, I set the scrubber a little bit before the in and on a Mac you push B to set in and then I go past the out and push N to set out. Once you set your ins and outs, you're going to go up to the top toolbar, click composition, scroll down to preview and then click RAM Preview. Now that the speed's how I like it, I usually go back down into the timeline and I set the scrubber up to where I think the focus of the clip should be. For this one, it's going to be somewhere towards the middle of the rotation. What I do is I grab these toggle bars and I bend the clip on both sides to make sure that the dip is in the middle of where the scrubber is. What that's going to do is it's going to give you a smoother in and out. To give you an example, this is what it looks like without the toggle arms used. Here's an example with using the toggle arms. As you'll see, it's a lot smoother in and a lot smoother out. Now that we've got the clip how we want it, we're going to get ready to export. What you want to do is set your in to the beginning of the clip and your out at the end of the clip. We're going to move up to the toolbar, select composition, scroll down, and choose make movie, which will bring us to the render queue. Once in the render queue, you're going to want to click best settings. And then again, make sure since we're working with DV, where it says field render, you want to make sure that that's lower field first, then click OK. After you set that, you're going to want to click lossless. Where it says compression type, click Scroll down until you find DV, DVC Pro, NTSC, and select it. Then click OK. The next thing we're going to want to do is choose audio output. You want to make sure that you do this or else you're not going to have any audio when you output it. Then click OK. Then it's render time. All right, once you hear that chime, it means it's time to head over to the computer and see how things turned out. If you have any further questions on this tutorial, feel free to hit us up at info at or on Twitter under Networkscape.